Hi, welcome back to the Cosmic Classroom. So we'll now talk about the fact that light travels at a certain speed. Light does not travel instantaneously as we experience in our everyday lives. In our everyday lives, we turn on the light and it comes up so fast that we don't even notice. But if, if you turn on a bulb of light and that bulb is very far from you, it's going to take a little amount of time for that light to travel and reach your eyes. That's very important in astronomy because it allows us to study the past. All right. So it's really not hard to compute how far does, a light, does light travel in one year. So one light year is the distance traveled by light during one year. So it's the speed of light times an year. And if you multiply all these numbers, you get a really large number of kilometers. So in one year, light travels this huge distance, right? So remember that one light year is, is a unit of distance, not a unit of time, all right? So for example, if we look at objects that are further away from us, we'll see that because light travels at a finite speed, we see objects as they were in the past. For example, the light, if you take a picture of the moon right now, we'll actually take a picture of the light that was reflected from the surface of the moon one second ago. If we look at the sun, we're actually looking at the light that was emitted eight minutes ago. Sirius is a star, um, a bright star in the sky, that you can see it as it really was eight years ago. And Andromeda is a big nearby galaxy, you actually see it as it was two and a half million years ago because it is two and a half million light years away from us. So if the sun were to die today for some reason, you'd still have eight minutes before you knew about it, all right? So let's see how does that um, help us in astronomy. If we look at uh, the Orion Nebula, for example. You can't see that with your naked eye, but you look at the Orion um, constellation, and with a very low power telescope, you can see the Orion Nebula, which is right there. And you're actually looking at light that was emitting, emitted 1,500 years ago, right? You're gonna have to wait another 1,500 years to see that light that's being emitted now. For the Andromeda galaxy, it is even more extreme. You can see it as it was two and a half million years ago. And it's even funkier than that because one side of the galaxy is closer to you and the other side of the galaxy is further away from you. So the side that's closer to you has to travel a smaller distance in order to reach you. And the side that's further from you has to travel more. So you're actually seeing stars of different ages all at the same time. And in order to see the galaxy as it looks today, you need to wait another two and a half million years. And we can do that with things that are much further away. So for example, we are able to observe galaxies that are seven billion light years away, meaning we see them when they were younger by seven billion years. They were baby galaxies. We see some galaxies that are 12 billion light years away. So we see them as soon as they were formed. The universe is only 14 billion years. So if you see a galaxy that emitted its light 12 billion light years oh, uh, ago, it can at most be an age of 2 billion years. No more than that. So it's really a baby galaxy. So you see that we are looking, as we look objects that are further and further away, we see as they were in an epoch when the universe was younger and younger and younger. So the further we look, the more in the past we look. All right? And I hope that helps. I'll see you next time.